officers in order of when their number was retired. Please welcome number 16, Tom Satch Sanders. pick in the 1998 NBA draft, the Boston Celtics select Paul Pierce from the University of Kansas. One dribble, elevates, 18 feet, got it! Hey, Danny comes through yellow again! Gets it back to Pierce, Pierce, for the game! Paul Pierce at the buzzer! Ball away at the buzzer, oh. got it! <laughs> it's over! Pierce... Difficult shot. Got it! At the buzzer! Paul Pierce wins the game! Pierce is going to keep it. Elevates 18 feet. He did it again! Pierce puts it up for the win! Knocks it down! Celtics win! The Celtics swarm the floor. It is the end of a 22-year odyssey. It is the very definition of full circle. It is Banner 17. The mission statement is mission accomplished.
Sports Boston play-by-play man, Mike Gorman. Mike. You're ready to give the Pierce family a night they'll never forget. Welcome, everybody. On behalf of the entire Celtic organization, it is my distinct pleasure to welcome our distinguished guests who have joined us on the court, and most importantly, you Celtic fans who are here today, and Celtic fans who are watching all over the world. For 15 years, Paul Pierce was the brightest light on Causeway Street, and he never burned brighter than in the drive for Banner 17. Tonight, we celebrate the truth. Before the evening is over, Paul and his family will raise 34 to the rafters. This is Paul Pierce's night. There are many people who have helped Paul and contributed to his success, and we have some speakers here tonight who would like to tell Paul just how much they did do for him. To begin our speaking program, Welcome the Celtics lead owner, Rick Rosebeck. This is not from me. This is not me saying my words. It's me speaking for all of you fans the best I can. Were you there in 98? Did you watch when we drafted Paul, when they drafted Paul? Were you here with me in 2008 when we took it all the way and hung that banner? Then you know why we're here tonight to honor Paul and his teammates. We're here for the truth. There are lots of stats, Paul. You're third all-time in Celtic history in games played. You're second all-time in points, 24,000 points. Your first all-time in three-pointers, most of them from right over there in the fourth quarter to win the game. You're a ten-time All-Star. In the 2008 Finals, you were the captain, a champion, and the most valuable player. Thank you, Paul Pierce. Something you don't know, you're a big reason that I'm standing here today. Back in the late 90s, when I had nothing to do with the team, I would come with my little daughter, Kelsey, to watch the games. She would insist that we come, and she would take the 34 jersey and put it on. She was nine years old, and I'd take the number eight, Antoine Walker. And she would probably give me the big top hat or maybe the foam finger, and she'd have the hat. And we'd sit up in the stands and cheer for you guys, and nobody could take their eyes off of you. You were already special. It was clear. And that's when the idea started. I started thinking about getting involved with the organization, maybe buying the team somehow, and trying to take it all the way to Banner 17. And guess what? Look what happened. As a view. Being a great Celtic is much more than on the court, and it's much more than a banner. Being a great Celtic is off the court in the community, and you and Julie knew that from day one, obviously. You gave the Paul Pierce Center for Minimally Invasive Surgery at New England Medical Center. You started the Truth and Health Foundation, helping hundreds and thousands of inner city kids. At the Read to Achieve events, you always starred in the play at the end of the year for the Boston Public Schools. And hundreds and hundreds of Boston kids would have perfect attendance all year so they could come see you act in the play. He even won a league-wide NBA award for community service. The NBA recognized you league-wide. There's so much more I could talk about. Thank you for everything you guys did. Now let's talk a little basketball. It took us a long time to build up to the magical summer of 2007. We had to climb to the mountaintop, and it took a long, long time. But you hung in there with Celtic pride all the way through. We had a key meeting in the spring of 07. We promised to get you some more help, and you promised to recommit and get in incredible shape and come in loaded, ready to go in fall of 07. And thanks to Danny, 
for building the team and Doc for coaching the team. And my ownership partners were always there. The ownership partners always there with everything for everything we ever needed. And thanks to the fans, look what happened. When Ray Allen and Kevin Garnett arrived, things were different. Put, the, put you three together with Rondo and Perk, and we were unstoppable. In the regular season, in case anybody forgot, we went 66 and 16. In the first round of the playoffs, we had the very tough Atlanta Hawks featuring Al Horford. Sorry, Al. Second round, the Cleveland Cavaliers. They got us today, but they didn't get us then. You went mano a mano with LeBron. You scored 42 points. And we got by the Cavs in a very tough game seven here at the Garden. I've never heard a louder building, and I get chills every time I think about that game. It was on to Detroit. We won the conference finals, celebrated in their little visiting locker room, and all of a sudden, here it is, the finals against our ancient rival, the Lakers. Nobody picked us. Did you guys pick us in the finals? These guys picked us in the finals. Nobody else picked us in the finals. Game one. Tight game, getting going, and down you go with maybe a catastrophic knee injury. You're carried off the court, and I thought, that's it. Everybody thought, that's it. Okay, we made it to the finals. But then you come back out, and you hit two threes back-to-back -back and broke the Lakers back. Game four... We're down 21 points in game four after one quarter. We're up two games to one. The Lakers are going to tie it, obviously. We're down 21. We're down 24 points in the third quarter. And then a total team effort. Eddie House, Ray Allen, KG, Paul, James Posey. And we, we go ahead three to one. At that point, we felt like we had it. We were that close. We celebrated that night at the Beverly Wilshire. And here we are, game six. Tight game until the second quarter, then we broke it open. We went on a run, we go in the halftime, up more than 20 points, and I suddenly realized there's a gold trophy in this building somewhere. And guess what? That freaking trophy is still here because we won it that night. It's been incredible to be here with you for 15 years, to build a championship team around you to put our hopes and dreams on your shoulders and have you carry the load and make the dreams come true. You and your teammates epitomize the best of the Celtics. You guys, every one of you and the coaches and the general manager were just the way all the legendary Celtics would have wanted you to be. Red Auerbach always told me about you, never missed a chance to say you were a true Celtic and his favorite player. I'm so glad to be able to stand here and thank you and thank everybody, but thank you for giving everything you had on and off the court. Captain, community champion, finals MVP, no doubt a first ballot Hall of Famer. And let me tell you something, you're the last band everywhere, number 34 for the Boston Celtics. Congratulations. presentation of the gifts. Joining Wick Grosbeck for the presentation will be his wife, Amelia Fazolari, co-owners Steve and Judy Pagluca, along with co-owners Robert and Esther Epstein. with a custom handmade stained glass backboard, a replica of the retired number banner that number 34 will be added to, framed in authentic Celtics parquet. A green collage, including an iconic photo of Paul, as well as a piece 
of the authentic Celtics parquet, etched with Paul's biggest Celtics career highlights. To go along with that, there will be a custom watch to memorialize tonight's event here at the TD Garden. MVP, Celtics legend, NBA champion. My favorite memory is uh, back in 2002, being in the Garden, watching them erase a 26-point deficit against the New Jersey Nets. Here, dominated fourth quarter, 19 points, and a historic comeback. You've seen all the greats of that parquet floor, and truth, you're top among them. My daughter and I were at the Garden in 1998 when you were drafted. We cheered like there's no tomorrow. Game seven, when you drop 41 against the Cavs. The duel with LeBron. When he came back with the Clippers and hit that final three-pointer. Coming back from injury! To be the Lakers! And Paul, you are a man of integrity and a great role model for the youth in America. Thank you so much. Thank you, Paul, for being such a role model to so many people. Thank you for your dedication to the game and your involvement in the community. You're a friend. You're the truth. You're the captain. You're a legend. Thank you, Paul. Congratulations on having your number 34 hoisted to the rafters with all the other great Celtics. It is an honor. You earned it. And that's the truth. Congratulations, Paul. You deserve it. Congratulations, Matthew. And we'll always love you. Paul is always there for us, and we've always been there for him. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you, truth. Gracias. Thank you, Paul. Thanks for all the memories. Thank you, Paul. I appreciate you, and the Boston fans love you. Congratulations. Congratulations, Paul! Congratulations, Paul! Look up there, Paul. You're going to be with some greats. Larry Bird, Kevin McHale, Bill Russell, and the list goes on. You deserve the truth. Congratulations. Congratulations, number 34, Paul Pierce. Congratulations. Many, many congratulations to you, my man. Congratulations, Paul. Congratulations, Paul. Congratulations, Paul. Congratulations, Paul. Congratulations, Paul. You deserve it. I'm still your big brother. I love you to death. Congratulations, Dad. Welcoming the head coach of the 2008 World Champions, Doc Rivers. Before I uh, start talking about Paul, I have to say, sitting over in the stands as a fan, having a beer, yelling at the refs, that was awesome. And sitting with Rondo and Kevin doing a game is just off the charts and one of the things that Rondo and Kevin both said when we were sitting over there is man these fans are amazing here we, we talked about 
about this day. Oh, we talked about this day with the players in the locker room. Um, in LA, we're sitting in the locker room and we were talking about we're going to get that. That's going to be ours. And we're going to come back and I'm going to sit here and I'm going to talk about retiring Paul Pierce's number. We talked about this day. Sometimes, sometimes in life, you got to dream it first before it happens. And we talked about it. It was in our minds. Um, and then we had another talk about what it would take. And, and this is the part with Paul that, that makes him so special and all our guys. We talked about being a role player. You know, playing your role to win the team. Uh, you, you think about Paul. He was a star here when I got here. And I decided to, to challenge him. You know, I decided, you know what? For us, Paul has to play a little different. And at the beginning part, we bumped heads a couple of times. And I don't know if everybody knows, Paul and I are born on the same day. So he is stubborn as hell. And he figured that I'm just as stubborn. And so we bumped heads a couple of times, but at the end of the day, I'm sitting in my office and Paul walks in and says, hey, we're good. We're going to do this together. And from a coach, I thank you because we live in a time now where when a star player will allow a coach to coach him, uh, that's why you win. We, we came up with this word, Mbutu, you know, and, and we lived it. Like, we lived that word, Paul. Uh, a person is a person through other people. I can't be all I can be unless you are all you can be. When I'm happy, you're happy. When you're happy, I'm happy. I live through you. The reason we're all here, the reason I'm here now, is because Paul Pierce... It's getting his number retired. He's Someone asked me recently, what is the one word? If you could come up with one word, you would say truth. I would say clutch. Clutch. Clutch is the word that I would come up with. Uh, Paul, you could go 0 for 10. And we would be in the huddle and drawing up a play. And I'm looking at Kevin, Ray, Rondo. And every time, you were like, bring it to me. Bring it to me. Um, what's amazing about Paul, before I coached him, I told this story. I, um, you had a big game against us. And I told you this when I was in Orlando. And after the game, I yelled at all our team. I, I got on them. I was like, how is this slow? non-athletic, uh, out-of-shape guy killing you out there. And then when I got to Boston, I realized you were not slow. You were extremely athletic. But what you still beat people by, you beat them with your mind. You were, I don't think Paul gets enough credit for how smart of a basketball player he was. You were a brilliant player. Uh, you were a clutch player, Paul. And more importantly, you know what you are? You're a Celtic and you're a champion. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, next to say a few words the president of basketball operations, the architect of Celtic basketball, Danny Ainge. Congratulations, Paul and Julie. Um, you know, right after Wick called you to tell you that you were going to have your number retired this year, um, not too long after that, I got a call from Julie. 
who said, if you're going to retire his number, you got to do it before February 24th, while I'm still 34. <laughs> Happy birthday early, Julie. Appreciate that. What a tribute to you. I, you know, we're, Doc and I were marveling at all these people that have stayed after a tough game by the Celtics to honor you today. Toughest ticket in town, maybe in Celtics history today. That's a great tribute to you and what you have brought to the city and to the franchise. I think Wick pretty much spelled that out pretty well, all the things that you've done for us. After this day is over, your number's retired, the banner's hanging. You know, I worked hard. I got to the NBA. You're a Boston Celtic. But not everybody makes it up there. And I'm like, how did I get there? And so when I think about the journey, you know, I have to go back to the beginning. You know, some of the, the traits that I displayed out here on the court, off the court. And I have to go to none other than my mother. Because when I look at her... Just, you know, she's uh, she's a single parent, three boys, hardworking, she sacrificed, she loved, um, she did anything she could, anything she could, you know, it's not, it's not easy when you're a single mother, three boys, you know, as a mother, how do you teach a boy to be a man, but... She did it, and uh, mom, you know, all these characteristics that the guys that you hear from everybody, they come from you, and I thank you. You made me the man I am today, and I appreciate that. Um, you know, uh, my inspiration, my first inspiration were my two brothers. You know, when I grew up, I didn't, I didn't have the dream to go to the NBA. You know, I just wanted to go to college. You know, it wasn't guys weren't coming out of high school to college until Kevin Garnett. But uh, <laughs> you know, I just wanted to, I just wanted to go to college. And you know, to look up at my brothers, were both D Division One athletes. I wanted to be just like them. Jamal and Steve, you guys, you guys inspired me. You guys drove me. I wanted to be just like you. I wanted to go to school, play sports. My oldest brother played Wyoming University. My other brother played Fresno. And, you know, these are the first guys that I've seen that put the vision in. That's what I want to do. That's what I want to be. And um, I thank you guys for being that inspiration. You know, giving me something. Giving me a... You guys gave me a... Something to look up to, something to follow, something to drive myself. Not only did I want to be like you, I wanted to see if I can be better. But it started right there in the house. And so I thank you for that. And, you know, these are people who I feel that are were very instrumental at me getting here today. This is the beginning. This is the beginning. It starts at home. It starts, you know, where you come from. Um... Dan, it's the people you surround yourself with. 
you know, you have people along this journey, you don't know why they're in your life, and I didn't realize it until, like, the journey was over. At the end of my career, you don't realize the people that are put in your life. And I was able to be around some very special people, close family. A lot of them are in here tonight. You know, my uncle Michael was very instrumental, and uh, he doesn't even, I don't know, I told this story, but he put up my rim. He put up my backboard and rim. We went and got a piece of cardboard, just a piece of wood, and cut it up and got a rim, and we put it in, in my backyard. And, you know, when I couldn't go outside after 6 o'clock, I was in the backyard shooting. And when I look back at that, I'm like, man, I put in countless hours because we were able to put this rim up. And so I thank you. I thank you. You don't know that. That went a long way for me. <laughs> that went a long way. And uh, just the coaches, my high school coach, he was the, Pat Roy, he was here today. He was the first guy that told me, you're going to be a pro one day. This is when guys weren't thinking about pro. He put the vision in my head. It was like, you're going to be a pro. I was like, I was in the ninth or 10th grade. He was like, you're going to be a pro. And I, at the time, I'm like, a pro? You know, I just want to go to college. And But he put that vision in there. Pat Roy, I thank you um, for just installing that vision and continue to push me. And, and then... And then I, had, I, I grew up without my father around, but these are people who are like father figures, my uncle, coaches in my life. Another guy in my neighborhood, Scott Collins, who was here today, a police, a local police officer who just was just good, was a good cop in the neighborhood who just took kids under his wing. He would cut my hair when I didn't have money. He would open up the gym. And he, he if you saw some of these videos he's in, he cut my hair on draft night. <laughs> on draft night, <laughs> he cut my hair. You know, I, I didn't even have a barber. He cut my hair on draft night. <laughs> and so I'll, I'll thank you. I'll thank you, Scott, for being a friend, a mentor, a father figure. He's in the house tonight. Thank you so much. Um, my college coach, Roy Williams, isn't here today, but he pushed the hell out of me. I threw up on the first day of practice, and I was just like, man, this, I don't know if college or this level of college is for me. But he pushed me to be excellent and continued to push me not only on the court but in the school. And I, I want to thank him. You know, there's so, there's so many people that are instrumental. It's just like you got my coaches, my mentors, my family members. And then... You know, the guys, the teammates. I mean, your teammates that you come up with. You know, I wouldn't even be here. I mean, this, for me to sit here and see the teammates who are here, Twan, Walter, Leon, Dana Barros, White Mamba Scow, Kevin, Rondo. Man, you guys don't even know how, how good that feels that you guys support me like this, man. That, it feels so good. And then the Celtics, the Celtic legends of the past, Max, you got the Chief, Tom Satch, you know, you guys, thank you because you guys, you guys set the tone. I mean, if I never make the Hall of Fame to go up as a Celtic with my number here, that's probably all I could ever ask for. That'll be enough. That will be enough for me. That will be enough. Because it says a lot. That says a lot. I mean, everybody knows, you guys know we had our tough times. It, it wasn't just like any relationship. If you're going to last a long time, you got to get through the rocky moments. It's going to be ups and downs, and we definitely had our rocky moments. And eventually we sought them out, and we ended up with a championship. But you guys, the fans, you guys were behind me like none other. And I tell this... When guys come to play here and they go somewhere else, they're like, no fans are like Boston. There's no fans like Boston. There's no organization. There's no organization. And 
I see many players, there's no organization. This is a first class organization. Thanks to the, you see the people you see right here in the front row and they set a standard. They set a standard for the NBA because this is the Boston Celtics. This is not over there or over here. This is Boston Celtics. You know, and when you talk about sports, there's only certain franchises in any sport that you just put at that level. And this is definitely one of them. Um, man. <laughs> Doc, you helped me. You helped me so much, man. Become a man. I know I was, I was young and mature. And like you said, we bumped heads. That's probably because we have the same birthday. And, uh, but you helped me realize it was hard for me at first to do things. It wasn't that you wanted me to do things your way. You wanted me to do things the right way. And that helped me so much because then once I took that in, my game took off. My stats, it wasn't about the stats anymore. It was just like playing the right way. And that helped me understand how to really win. You know, I had a talent, but you helped me understand how to win. And you helped me mature as a player. And, you know, what more can you ask for? I mean, I thought I was at a certain level. You took me to the next level. And I'm like, you know, I thank you for that. Thank you. I thank you for that. I'm sure I'm, uh, oh, man, I'm sure I'm forgetting some. All right, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, well, like Kevin always say, breathe, breathe. I'm trying to breathe. <laughs> oh, all right, all right. You know, uh, another guy I want to give a shout out, my boy Jason Crow is right here. This is my best friend right here. He has an Inglewood jersey. I played Inglewood High with him since ninth grade. But we pushed each other. Like, this is the only guy I ever worked out with. I never had a trainer. Uh, I never had somebody wake me up and say, you need to get to the gym. Me and him would wake up 6 o'clock in the morning every single day to try to be better. And that was since high school. And, like, this is just when we were kids wanting to be better. We pushed each other to the max. You know, Jason wasn't that talented, but... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just messing with you. But he wind up having, he wind up, wasn't really recruited. He wind up having a 10-year pro career overseas because I thought we pushed each other and we made each other better. And so, man, thank you, bro. You know, thank you. And, uh, I'll just... <laughs> You guys are the best. I tell this story all the time in our losing years. When we didn't win much, this was still the loudest building in the NBA. It was, it was unbelievable. It was like unbelievable. It's, oh, man. My family here, my kids. This makes it all worth it because of you. This makes it all worth it. My kids, Prince, Brianna, Jazzy, I love you guys. My beautiful wife for being there. This makes it all worth it. This makes it all worth it, man. Oh, man. I tried as long as I could. When we start talking about the kids, then we get emotional. Oh, man. Oh, who am I leaving out? Mike, Tommy. You guys. <laughs> you guys. I love you, Mike, Tommy. You guys saw it all from day one. You saw me grow from a boy to a man to a champion. Thank you guys for being there, being supportive. 
I got a lot of Tommy points in the bank. Can I cash those in? <laughs> oh, man. And Danny, for you, when you first got here, you were cleaning house. I just knew I was gone. I just knew I was gone. I mean, he traded everybody, but thank you for sticking with me, having belief in me, uh, and helping me become a champion. Thank you so much, man. That, that, that's, that's big. That was big. That's big. That's big. <laughs> to the guys, I want to give a special thanks Kevin. <laughs> Kevin. Where would I be without you? <laughs> where would I be without you, man? The only... Kevin, me and Kevin talk every week. He could, we come to the house and talk. And he says his only regret was not coming here five years earlier. <laughs> I love you. Oh, man. No. What can I say about you, man? You, you've had some historical nights in this building. You made me better. It's an honor to play with you. It's an honor to play with Antoine Walker here. He started it off. Thank you, Antoine. Walter. Everybody loves Walter. Thank you. Leon, Scal, Dana Barros, you guys. You guys are the best. To all my teammates who weren't here to make it today, I thank you guys because without any of those guys who, who allowed me to be me, I wouldn't be here today. And uh, one, last, one thing I want to leave, one second. I want to um, say one thing. I won't keep you guys too long. I know people have dinner plans and stuff, but... <laughs> You know, my wife helped me out with this one. The true gift that I've been given, the true legacy I leave is the inspiration that I was brought, that I brought to others. To think that my worst days of being stressed and tired, mentally drained, taught as a, mentally drained, taught a kid watching on TV to preserve. The blessing I've been given is to pay it forward. To prove that hard work pays off when you aren't looking to be better than everyone else, but instead to be the best you, no matter what your position in life. <laughs> definition, definition of tradition, the handing down of statements, beliefs, legends, customs, information, etc., from generation to generation especially by word of mouth or by practice. The tradition of the Celtics is just that. The Celtics truly practice their tradition. They are family in the best sense of the word. Once you're in, they have your back. Their values and beliefs are those of unwavering pride. Pride not just to be the best, but to surround you with the best so you can live your, you can be your best self. <laughs> the Celtics not only teach you the game of basketball, they teach you success. Celtic pride will always be with me and my family. And last but not least, where would I be without all of you? Where would I be without the fans? Where would I be without you guys? The best fans in the world. Thank you for being there through good and bad. Thank you so much for cheering, for coming, supporting good and bad nights. You guys have been there for me. Thank you so much.
you guys make this even more special to say my number is going up in the rafters. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the moment we've all been waiting for. A culmination of a legendary career. And at this time, please welcome Paul and his family over to the banner as they raise it to its rightful place in the Garden Rafters. Thing. One last thing, 
And I know through all of this, I know Red Orback is looking down on us. Um, thank you, Red. Thank you. Thank you. One more time for the captain and the troop. attending tonight's number retirement ceremony. Good night, everybody. Please drive home safely.